Morning, morning, morning. Hello, how is everybody? You might have seen my eyebrow gymnastics then. I don't understand why I cannot raise the other one. I can raise that one. I, I'm, I'm trying. I can do both, but I cannot raise the other one. Anyway, a little few comments in if you're on Facebook down below if you want, if you can claim to raise both of your eyebrows but independently of each other. I'm stuck on one side. Look, look at all them. Never ever. Cool, so today we are cracking on with our journey in Proverbs, which is, I absolutely love Proverbs, got to be honest with you, it's one of my favourite books, um, it was probably one of the first books that I really understood when I read the Bible, because I am a bit of a how-to kind of guy, show me how to do it and I'll be able to replicate it, so this for me was really easy, it wasn't deep, it was just like, if you love Jesus, these are the kind of things you should do, and um, I call it a bit of a Ron Seal book. You know, remember them? It does what it says on the tin. Boom! This is what it does. And I think the verse that I've picked out for us to focus on today, which is Proverbs 19, verse 17, is one of those verses. And it, this is what it says. It says, If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. It's genuinely not rocket science. There's nothing deep here. I'm not go going to go to the Greek or the Hebrew. We're just going to go with the English. And it's simple. If you lend to the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. It's like he's writing you a, a blank check that can be cashed. Just you're not in charge of the amount or the time. But he is guaranteeing you Whatever you do to help people who have less than you, he's going to repay you. I think that that's an incredible concept and absolutely brilliant. So the two things I want to pick out of this verse is this. Number one, we're pretty much commanded, called, compelled and equipped to help the poor. But you might right now focus in on the one word that I think can get in the way of us. And it's this poor. Well, you know poor. We can only help the poor. I think it simply means this. If you have more of something than another person, you are better off than them. Therefore, the other person is poor. So um, we don't need to go too deep into that. But let's be also honest. I don't think it's simply focusing on money. I think it's focusing on two things. One, the character of God, the provision of God, and Having a generous spirit, like it, a generous spirit means you will give out of your wealth, you'll give with your ways and you'll give with your words. What do I mean by that? Well, out of your wealth, you know, what have you got? What kind of things do you have? Uh, money, possessions, uh, stuff. How can you use your things and stuff to help other people? Incredibly, once um, Michelle, God spoke to my wife Michelle and told her to give a specific dress to a specific person. So Michelle got it dry cleaned, wrapped it up beautifully and gave it to this specific person and she literally bawled her eyes out because she had been praying. She had an important function or a wedding or something and she didn't have any any the, the means to buy herself a new dress. She had seen Michelle wearing this dress before and said, oh, I love that dress, it's so pretty. And when Michelle gave it to her, she, she knew God had listened to her heart. And it just changed the atmosphere, it changed her, it was a brilliant moment. And that is what I'm talking about, is being generous with your, your wealth. It's not simply money, it's the stuff. It could it be you just lend your car to people free and easy. He gave you the car, he being he, God. So take your keys and be generous with them. He gave you all the money you have via your job, etc., or inheritance, or however you've got it. So be generous with it. And, you know, if you're in a good place right now, I'm telling you right now, there will be a person near you in a bad place, in the head, in the thinking, in the spirit. They might be downcast, they might be depressed, they might be anxious, they might be worried. And if you're doing okay, come on, let's sow with our words into people's lives. Let's be generous with our encouragement. So that's your words, your wealth, and your ways. 
just with how you are as a person, just be generous. Be easy going with, with, with your, you know, when somebody wrongs you, be forgiving. Be, we can all be generous in spirit. And do you know what the brilliant thing is? When you're doing that, God's literally promising he will repay you. That's not me. I'm simply reading the word right now. He will repay you. And do you know what? He owns cattle on a thousand hills. So what does that mean in today? It means he owns so much. Providence and prosperity and provision is what God does. It comes from his character. And I believe when we walk in generosity, we're walking in the character and nature of God. So that's a great thing. He's no man's debtor. I just want to finish today with a challenge. There's a story um, in the, about a man called John Wesley. You may or may not know him. He is one of our forefathers of the faith. He rode the length and the breadth of the UK preaching the gospel. Uh, and when I say rode, he literally did it on horseback. Hundreds of years ago, he's written hymns and, 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 and sermons that we still refer to today. He's done commentaries. His legacy is, is phenomenal. Now, in those days, 200 plus years ago, it was said that he would earn around about £1,400 a year. Now, that was a lot of money in those times. But this is the amazing thing about John Wesley. It was said that he chose to live off £30 a year. Okay, so he was giving away... 98% of his wealth every year, living on only 2%. And this is said of him that he said, if I leave £10 behind, I am, any man can call me a thief. He was passionate about taking everything that he'd been given by God and giving it away to those who were less fortunate. So yes, when he gave away food, that money to buy food for a family at that point in time, it blessed them. But it also, 200 years later, is blessing me and helping me to think about how I can live my life more in line with that. I think that's amazing. So we go from John Wesley to the book of John. And in the book of John, there's a story about the feeding of the 5,000. It says the people are getting hungry and Jesus turns to his disciples and says, lads, 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 let's get these guys some food. See, a generous spirit. He realizes, he opens his eyes and re recognizes people are hungry. The disciples go, well, we've got none. Then a little boy comes and says, hey, I've got some fish and I've got some loaves. And Jesus takes that, which was the natural, and turns it into a supernatural moment of feeding 5,000 people. Look, if we apply this verse, that boy went home with a lot more than he left, than he gave on that day. First thing, he went home with an unbelievable story. He went home with faith that Jesus could do unbelievable, incredible miracles. And it does say they collected 12 baskets of food. So I'm pretty sure he went home with some of that. Both of those stories... John Wesley and the little boy who gave his lunch, they resonate today, hundreds and thousands of years later. They impacted people then and they impact people now. And that my challenge is to you today, church. Let's stand on this promise that he will repay you and let's be generous with our words, our ways and our wealth because it really does impact people. It changes them today. And it can leave a legacy tomorrow. Church, you are absolutely amazing. We love you. We think you're brilliant. And we're going to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everybody listening to this and the rest of our church who may not. We pray that they have an incredible day today. That their eyes will be opened to the wonder of you and the ways that you do. Father, I pray right now that you will bless our church and that you will speak to us loudly about what we can do to build and grow your kingdom today. Be blessed. Amen. Church, you're awesome. I love you. Have a great day.